this is Professor C.A. Rohit Shroff and I welcome you on behalf of J.K. Shah classes. This lecture is going to be a very short and a crisp lecture without wasting any time of you further because you are in a very short, you know, in a crunch of time. I understand the exam is just a month away. So this lecture is going to be only about the RTP. We are not going to discuss the amendments in this particular lecture. So this, the discussion is only for RTP. P. That's it. We are going to discuss in this two part. This is the descript. I mean that this is the MCQs and a part B is going to be descriptive. What I will insist is before you leave, you know, you are out to the answers. Read the question on your own, interpret it and visualize, you know, what would the points you would have written and then listen to the answer. I would insist you don't see only this particular RTP. You could do this on 2x and also see the previous attempts RTP which we have already uploaded. And if you have done it on your own, more than good, focus on interpretation because that is where a lot of students fail. So without wasting any further time, let us move on with the discussion of the MCQs. So let us begin with the integrated case study. So what is the case one say? Good Deposit Limited, a NBFC registered under Section 45 IA of the RBI Act and listed on NSC, appointed ABC and Company Chartered Accountant as the statutory auditors for the year ending 31st March 23. Mr. J, the audit partner of ABC and Company, extracted the monthly net owned fund position from the books of Goods Deposit Limited. ABC and Company was peer reviewed last year in January 19 and its peer review certificate was valid until January 22. So they have added both NBFC and peer review here. ABC and Company did not apply for peer review after January 22 till the acceptance of the audit. Now they have given the net owned funds. So net owned funds from April to March 23. So net owned fund has to be around 2 crores but as on if you see March 23 it is more than that. So this is in lakhs you will have to convert it into uh, crores. The board of good deposit limited consisted in 9 directors of which the 5 were non-executive including a woman. So they had 9 directors out of which 5 were non-executive with a woman director and 2 were independent so they are talking about the board out of which the chairperson of the board was a regular non-executive director and a promoter of the company. The company was not out of the thousand top listed for the last five years. So NBFC, Audit Committee Corporate Governance as well as your peer review. During the year, Mr. J recommended to the board and the audit committee to have internal audit. Okay, So to add on, they are talking about internal audit. However, the board citing budget issues rejected the partner's recommendation. However, assured that they would consider next year to have an internal audit department. Now, on the basis of the above, you are required to choose the most appropriate answer. Mr. J reported under clause 3A of Master Circular, NBFC auditors report Reserve Bank directions that all good deposit limited is not eligible to certificate of registration on 45 IA as during the year net on funds went below the required limit. See, we check it on 31st of March, but they are saying you know it went below the limit. So let's let's read the question further. Management of NBFC had a different opinion that the certificate pertaining to the net on funds from the statutory auditor is required with reference to the position of the company as at the end of the financial year 31st March and not based on each month's position. Kindly guide. Mr. Mr. J with respect to the requirement under master direction, every NBFC shall submit a certificate to its statutory auditor that is eligible to hold a certificate. Such certificate should be referenced to the position of the company as on 31st of March. Absolutely correct. We show it on 31st of March. We will not check the whole month. So answer C A seems to be appropriate. Though we'll have to read B C D. Every NBFC shall submit a certificate from its statutory auditor that is eligible to hold a certificate of registration shall be on each month. No, so this is not appropriate. Every NBFC NBFC shall submit a certificate from its to its statutory auditor that it is eligible to hold certificate of registration under RBI Act. Such a certificate will be referenced of the company throughout. So again, this is this does not make sense. And only NBFC MFI shall submit. Every NBFC shall submit. So answer here is going to be A. Okay, I hope you could crack this very easy. 
Okay, now this is relating to your audit committee, corporate governance, SEBI, LODR that you have studied in your law. Let us go through this. Mr. J was of the opinion that composition of the company's board of directors is not in compliance with SEBI, LODR. Kindly guide the management with respect to the provision which is not complied by the management. Firstly, they are saying where a regular non-executive chairperson is promoter of a listed or is related to any person or promoter person occupying management position at the level of BOD or at one level below the BOD, at least half of the board directors should consist of independent directors. This is correct. So, which if you consider this, the same has not been complied with. Are majority of them independent? No. So, here again, answer A seems to be very appropriate. So, in question number 2, the answer is going to be again A. Next, at the time of accepting the audit of good deposit limit, the quality engagement partner objected that ABC does not hold a peer review certificate. Hence, cannot accept the statutory audit of NBFC. Mr. J was of the opinion that ABC and company were falling under level 2 category and hence they are required to get themselves peer reviewed once in 4 years. Kindly guide Mr. J with respect to the peer review requirement as per the peer review guidelines. So they are saying we are in level 2. So we need to do it once in 4 years. So again we will have to consider SEBI LODR and peer review to year together. Every practice unit falling under the category of level 2 is reviewed once in 4 years. ABC was last reviewed in 2019 and accordingly they need to get themselves peer reviewed in 2023. Second, as per peer review mandate, practice unit which proposed to undertake statutory audit of enterprise whose equity or debt are listed in India or abroad defined under SEBI. For this practice unit, there is a prerequisite starting from 1st of April. 22 having peer review before undertaking the statutory audit so this is new relevant amendment where we will have to have to get our peer review if we are auditing this particular entities so answer here is going to be b next mr j wants to highlight the matter with respect of absence of internal audit in the audit report under the emphasis of matter para so now they are talking about what emphasis of matter para However, the management was of the opinion that the audit partner was not right by disclosing the sad matter in the report as it was an internal matter and the audit team had not identified any material evidence which could impact opinion. Kindly guide Mr. A. So when do we give emphasis of matter para? When the matter of is of such importance that it is fundamental to the user's understanding. Here, do we require emphasis? Well, let's read the options. Emphasis is included in the auditor's report, a matter appropriately presented or disclosed is of such importance that it is fundamental to the user's understanding. Hence, EOM is correct. Second, again, they are giving emphasis of matter refers to matter other than those presented in the financial statement. So, this definition itself is incorrect because this definition is of other matter. Next, emphasis of matter para, they have given the correct definition and they are saying reporting is incorrect. Correct, if the matter is of not such significance that you need to highlight in your report, it is an internal matter. When do we give an emphasis of matter, something that is appropriately presented or disclosed in the financial statement. Or internal audit is not done, is not disclosed in the financial statement. So, you need not highlight that particular fact. So, answer here is going to be C. Though let us read D. Emphasis of matter. So, again they have given a definition of other matter and they are saying correct. So, answer here is going to be C. Next, again now they are including Caro. So, very fabulous case study that they have framed. They have inculcated NBFC, pure review, Caro, audit committee, corporate governance, emphasis. So, you know very beautiful, fantastic case study touching a lot of points here. So, what is question number 5? Kindly guide Mr. J regarding areas where he may report the absence of internal audit function. The internal auditor is required to report the matter in the basis for qualified opinion. Are we qualifying the opinion based on this? No. The auditor is required to report same under clause 13. Is this clause 13? No, 13 deals with what? Related party. So, this is not 13. So, you will have to memorize your clauses. All the students have attended. We have made a code. If you recollect what was Phil Priyanka Chopra's DP and second was 
Pawan, Nawab, Rins, Central Railway at GAC. So, this is your clause number 14. So, answer here is going to be C. Right? So, this was our integrated case study. Moving ahead with independent MCQs. Firstly, Mr. D is a chartered accountant from Bangalore. He has been practicing as a sole proprietor for the past two decades. Mr. D's daughter S is a newly qualified chartered accountant who cleared the final exams just three months ago. Immediately after qualifying, she also wanted to set up a proprietary concern and practice on her own. After setting up the firm, she printed her own visiting card. So she wrote her name, she wrote proprietor, she wrote FCA, she wrote BICOP, she wrote office and phone number. In the view of the visiting card, whether Mr. S will be held guilty of professional misconduct. Whether you will be held guilty of misconduct? Yes, definitely. Under which clause? Under clause 1 of the part 3 of the first schedule. Because what she wrote was an FCA. I hope you could easily crack this particular point. So, this was question number 6. Next, Mr. Adi and associates are the statutory auditor for the financial year 22-23. While conducting audit, CS Saurabh, the engagement partner, noticed the following. Payment to various government employees not supported by document. Notices received from various regulatory authorities. Payments of various fines and penalties. Heavy payments to the legal counsel, unusual. So, what, what doubt do we have here? So, we think so, you know, there will be non-compliance to laws and regulation. If you recollect in SA 240, we have Return all these examples, you know, which may be indicators of non-compliance of laws and regulation. So, answer here is going to be B. Next, you have been given an assignment of audit of IT department of a PSU. A checklist was handed over to you which contained many questions as is external offset, data backups maintained at a place outside the premise, a separate username and password assigned to the individual users, a periodic change of the password is ensured. Which type of audit is likely to be conducted? Are we conducting a compliance audit? This is a compliance audit, correct? Propriety talks about what? Whether it is in the interest of the public at large. This is not comprehensive, this is not covering everything and this is not financial. So, hence the answer here is going to be compliance. Next, Sudarshan and Company was one of the joint auditors of Trilok Insurance. Mr. Mukesh, one of the engagement team member of the said auditor was examining the expenses. While verifying the expenses incurred in relation to the employees, Mr. Mukesh made a list of the same as follows, which was going on. So, payment of salaries of 95 lakhs included in employees remuneration and welfare benefit expenses, reimbursement of premium in respect of employees health, they have added this to Employees remuneration and welfare, training and non-training expense against to the same account, expenses incurred toward the medical treatment of employees not having health cover and incentive paid to the employees of the company who have solicited insurance companies. Okay, so who have solicited insurance companies, this is be added to the commission account. Now, whether it can be said that Trilog Insurance Company Limited had properly accounted for the expenses here. So, the training expenses shown separately an incentive paid to the employee should be included here. So, this will not go here and the commission account that they have added this should go in this particular account. Next, Paras Bank had an NPA of Supras showing a recoverable bond of 35 lakhs. It sold the NPA for 37 lakhs. Please select which of the following option is correct. So, this is one of the frequently asked question in the RTPs. Please make sure you know this well. So, we have earned 2 lakh rupees out of 35. I mean, recoverable was 35. However, sold it for 37. Now, the amount should remain in the Supras account? No. Credit should go to PNL? No. We will excess of 2 lakhs to provision for loss on sale. We will adjust this against the provision for loss of sale. And once that is over, then we will transfer it to the PNL. So we will not directly take it to the PNL. So answer here is going to be C. We will have to return. No, obviously we will not return. So answer here is going to be C. So this was a discussion about the MCQs. That is one integrated case study and five independent questions. So moving ahead with our discussion of the descriptive part. Firstly, the standards on auditing. 
this question i have been shouting on top of my voice during all our lectures that expect 720 in your examination they have asked a question based on 720 in the rtp so now i am not very sure whether they will ask the same question in your exam but i was very optimistic that 720 may arise in may 23 examination now buggle and company chartered accountants have been appointed as statutory auditors of money limited the audit team has completed the audit and is in the process of preparing the audit management report of the company have also been prepared draft report. Audit in charge was going through the draft annual report and observed that the company has introduced an item in its annual report indicating a downward trend in the market prices of the key commodities as compared to the previous year. However, the actual margin of the company reported in the financial statement has gone in the reverse trend. So, what they are trying to say is in the annual report, they say there is a downward trend. Downward trend in the market prices. So, it is showing that your GP ratio will rise because your cost reduces. But when you open the financial statement, it is showing other way around that is the GP ratio is reducing. Audit manager discussed the issue with the partner of the firm who in reply said that the auditors are not covered. In, with such disclosures made by the management in annual report, it is the responsibility of the management. Do you think the partner is correct in his approach? Discuss with reference to the relevant standard. This is dealing with SA 73 We will have to apply our audit procedures. If we think so, the information given in the annual report is incorrect, we will request the management to correct. If management corrects, we will just determine whether the correction is made. If management refuses, we will have to inform those charged with governance. So, what is my responsibility? The auditor shall request the management to correct the information. If management agrees, we will just have to determine whether the correction has been made. If they refuse, we will go and inform those charged with governance. So here, when they are saying okay, that auditor has no responsibility, is definitely incorrect. So this was SA 720. Okay. Second question. Pay attention to this, mark this little important, you may have to refer this answer from here. This is a new offbeat question they have added. The 720 question was an older question which is just a copy paste which we have earlier done. CAP is the auditor of Master Data Limited for the year 21-22. The company requests the auditor to undertake an exercise involving verification of trade receivables for half year ending 31st of March. The company wants to be satisfied that the trade receivables are properly confirmed and reconciled. In this regard, Mr. CAP to verify. So, what they want is only verification for this particular purpose. Now, CAP has to verify arithmetical accuracy of trade receivables to obtain confirmation from the trade receivables and ensure proper reconciliation. He is in dilemma whether he can give a report providing assurance to the company in this respect. CAP with the reasoning assume the above exercise can be undertaken and there is no legal bar. My friends, if you recollect our first lecture of CA final audit, we had done a basic concept that a practicing CA can technically provide four services. He can audit, he can do review, he can provide an assurance service and he can provide related services. Also in professional ethics, we have considered okay, that if you are providing other services, you cannot do audit and you cannot provide an assurance so here what they are asking you to is provide is a related services they are on a related services do or does an auditor express an opinion no this is a non-assurance service for us this is a non-assurance service so since this falls under the category of related services we cannot give an opinion on the same the auditor can issue what they're saying is can issue assurance report in case of audit and review we can do it in audit in review by providing assurance, the auditor comforts the users of the, of the financial statement. Assurance in the above context refers to the auditor's satisfaction as to the reliability of the assertion made by one of the party of the other user. To provide such assurance, the auditor assesses evidence collected as a result of procedures conducted and expresses a conclusion. The degree of satisfaction achieved, therefore, the level of assurance they may provide is determined with the procedures performed. So, what is the main answer is here. However, the type of services rendered in the given situation falls under what? Related services. It falls under what? Related services domain. They, these are in nature of agreed upon procedures to be carried out by the auditor. The auditor cannot issue 
a report without providing such services. He can only issue a report stating facts that they are without providing any sort of assurances. So we do not give assurances on those services, these are related services. Therefore, auditor cannot provide an assurance for such type of services. So mark this as important. So somewhere they are focusing right now on assurance and related service, whether you know the distinguish between everything. So this was your question number 12. Next, audit strategy planning and programming, though they have mentioned about SA210 here. Yeah? Now, Krishna Limited is a small size 25 year old company having business of manufacturing pipes. Company has a plant based out of Haridwar and have their corporate office in Meran. Recently, they appointed new form of chartered accountants. The statutory auditor want to enter into engagement letter with the company in respect of their services. But the management contended that since the statutory audit is mandated by law, engagement letter may not be required. So even if it is mandated by law, we do require engagement letter. Auditors did not agree to this and have started a format of engagement letter with the management for their reference before getting that signed. In respect, the management would like to understand that as per 210, if the agreed terms of engagement shall be recorded in the engagement letter, yes, we need to, and suitable form of the agreement. So what do we need to write in the engagement letter? If you recollect our answer, what we can write is forum. What is forum? F is nothing but the identification of the applicable financial reporting framework. What is O? The objective and scope. What is R? Reference to the expected form and contents of the reports to be issued. So what is the form and content? We will also inform that there may be circumstances in which the form and content may differ. So this was R. Then we will write about the auditor's responsibility and management's responsibility. So this is nothing but the contents of the engagement letter. Very a simple question. SA210. Even an inter student could have answered this. Next, Surat had a net worth of 2100 crore and in days are applicable to them. The company had various derivative contracts, options, forward contracts, interest rate swaps, which were required to be fair valued for which company got the fair valuation through an external power party. The statutory auditor of the company involved auditors expert to audit evaluation of the derivatives. Auditor and the auditor's expert were new to each other. They were working for the first time but to get up a good bonding. The auditor did not enter into any formal agreement. So if you recollect, we have marked this as very important. This is a frequently asked question. Four things that we need to include in our engagement letter. What are the four things that we are going to include there? That we will have to keep everything confidential. That you know, matter to which the experts work relate is highly complex. So in this answer, rather than writing where all written agreements is required, I mean what all do we put in writing, they are focusing on or which are the areas where we need to put it in writing. So if you read the previous answers of ICI, they have printed what is to be written, I mean put into the writing, here they are saying which areas we need to keep in writing. So that we are talking, going to talk where confidential matters, which matters are very highly complex. Then the auditor was not previously used work performed by that expert so if we have not used them then we have to add things in writing then the greater extent of the auditor's work and its significance if that his work is very significant then it is important but rather i would say your what you should have written was what are the things that you will put in writing what they have given is the need for detailed agreement is writing is required when so we have the answer in a book what are the things to be written in writing i would insist that should have been written but since they have given this answer we will stick to what icai says so this was your sa 620. moving ahead with the risk assessment and internal control during the course of audit of treasure limited ca gotham is concerned with the quality and effectiveness of internal control towards achieving this objective he wants to assess and evaluate the control environment Guide CA Gotham with a well-defined set of proceedings, standard operating procedures that is SOP in the assessment and evaluation. So what can we do here is very simply you, what you can memorize is what we'll have to check is Desi J. What do you mean by Desi J? Firstly, D, you should have delegation of the financial powers in the document. As the organization grows, it needs to delegate the financial and other powers to their employees. A clearly defined document on delegation of power allows controls to be clearly operated without being dependent on individuals. So there should be delegation of financial power document. 
नेक्स्ट वॉट इज ई वी शुड हैव एंटरप्राइज रिस्क मैनेजमेंट तो एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मस्ट हैव अ रोबस्ट प्रोसेस टू आइडेंटिफाई एंड मिटिगेट द रिस्क सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स यू हैव डन इन योर इंटर सी लेवल ई आई एस एंड एवरीथिंग वॉट इज एस देर शुड भी सेग्रीगेशन ऑफ जॉब रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज यू नो वन पर्सन शुड नॉट हैव ऑल द जॉब रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज नेक्स्ट वॉट इज आई we should have a information based control so we will re- require eif and everything to reduce the risk so this is i and uh, lastly there should be job rotation in sensitive areas i am not sure whether you know while i was a student while i was in my 10th standard my father used to send me to banks a lot to deposit a check and all a lot of time when i used to go you know there was a aunty who was sitting at the cashier counter when i used to visit after a couple of months she used to sit in some other counter updating the passbook after a couple months she was sitting in a demat counter i used to really wonder whether if they are placing musical chair or something like that but then i realized there is a rotation of job if one person is given the same job to be done over years there is a high possibility that he may enter into a fraud and he can easily commit a fraud but when there is a rotation of job for sensitive areas then in that case we can reduce the risk of fraud so this is nothing but what are the different sops that you can follow that is nothing but dc jai next auditors are required to obtain an understanding of internal control relevant to the audit and identifying and assessing its effectiveness of romms during the audit ocharyo limited you observed that the significant deficiency exist in the internal control my friends whenever there are significant deficiencies what we will do is we'll go to sa265 and communicate it to cwg and you want to ascertain the same elucidate the various indicators of significant deficiency which will help you in assessing the efficiency so here they are asking you what are the examples of significant deficiency there can be n number of examples we have done this in 265 and this is the only answer that they have been asking they are not asking much in 265 so let us go through this what can be the examples let us say ineffective aspects of the control environment for example indication that significant transaction in which management is financially interested are not scrutinized by tcwg so management may you know easily commit a fraud because tcwg is not assessing the same next identification of management fraud whether or not material see when even management is involved in fraud romms going to be very high management's failure to implement appropriate remedial action on significant deficiencies previously communicated so when we are communicated they are not taking action indicating that you know there may be a internal control deficiency next absence of risk assessment process within the entity so entity does not have a risk assessment process or if they have see they are they are talking about absence and here they are talking about ineffectiveness so they either they do not have a risk assessment process or the risk assessment process is inadequate both are nothing but deficiencies in internal control next evidence of ineffective response to identified risk if we have communicated they have not taken any action misstatement detected by the auditor that were not prevented detected by the entity's internal control so the controls are weak disclosure of the misstatements due to error or fraud as prior period items in the current period so you know previous year misstatements are disclosed as prior period items evidence that management is management's inability to oversee the preparation so they are not able to fulfill their responsibilities so this was sa 265 moving ahead with your favorite chapter that is special aspects of auditing in automated environment they ask you a very simple question firstly let me read out wish for new foundations limited a pharmaceutical company collected the data from some hospitals and their experts tried to understand medical needs of elderly people after a complete study their experts developed a application where this company will provide complete health care charging a nominal amount from the customer if the customer download this application on their mobile phones cs sheetal in his audit has used the data analytics known as computer assisted audit technique give illustrations of suggested approach to get benefit from the computer assisted audit technique so they are asking about the what are the benefits so what you can remember is you die raw what will you say you die raw firstly what is you nothing it is nothing but you understand the business and the environment d it will helps you define the objectives and the criteria it will help in identifying the source and format data it will help you in extracting the raw data report and documents results and conclusions next a is apply the criteria and the data obtained criteria is nothing but the benchmark 
verify the completeness and validate the and confirm the results so you will have to memorize this where you will have to say okay, you know these are the benefits of computer assisted audit techniques moving ahead with company audit which is mainly actually focusing but what caro the importance of all other sections of company audit in final ca has drastically gone down which we have discussed they are mainly focusing on caro and your indias based question so let us read what does question 16 have to say here new private limited is a company based out of mumbai the company has authorized capital of 200 lakhs and paid up capital plus reserves of 95 lakhs which is less than 1 crore during the year under audit for 31st march the auditor of ysn associated noted the following point on 15th december the company had borrowings of 75 lakhs on the set date the company received a new loan of 30 lakhs for a new project that was developed however the project was shelled on 17th december due to technical reasons and the whole loan was paid will caro be applicable here my friends definitely because in caro it is applicable to a private company i hope you have noticed we are talking about a private company here so it will apply to a private company they will be excluded if paid up shared capital plus reserves is less than one crore which is less which is 95 lakhs then your borrowings is less than one crore but borrowing is checked during the year even if the during the whole year if it has reached one crore it is applicable though on 31st of march the borrowings is less so in this case the borrowing had gone to 105 lakhs so it is 1.1 crore 5 lakhs hence it has breached the amount of 1 crore once it has been breached in the whole year caro will be applicable so here in this case first point they are talking about the applicability who are excluded banking company insurance private company private company is the paid up share capital is less than 1 crore borrowing is less than 1 crore and your revenue is less than 10 crores okay it also does not apply to one person company small company section 8 company now in the given case since the borrowing has increased 1 crore caro is going to be applicable if car was not applicable the further point should have been of no use to us so yes caro is applicable second point during the year new proceedings is initiated under the company for holding a benami property of 2.5 however the company's legal team had advised that that a case would not withstand the law and would be dismissed during the year so what if the case will be dismissed does not matter right so this since we have a case against us we need to disclose the same so as per clause 1 e of para 3 of caro 2020 auditor is shall include a statement whether proceedings have been initiated and if so whether the company has appropriately discussed in the given case whatever has happened they said therefore above observation new proceedings initiated for the company need to be disclosed so does not matter what the i mean the legal team says since there is a proceedings going on we need to disclose this as a contingent library and will disclose the same under caro as well so this was about clause 1 e that is property plan equipment next the company had incurred a cash loss of 39 lakhs during the financial year compared to the cash profit of 15 lakhs in the previous year the total turnover of the company for the financial year was 45 crores now if you have incurred a cash loss in the previous year you need to report so here under this particular clause you will write that there was a cash loss of how many 39 lakhs so you'll have to report here so very simple clause so this will be clause 17 next during the year the ys associate had offered to resign from the acting as a company's auditor they however later decided to postpone their resignation to the following year at the conclusion of the audit there was a difference of opinion between two article assistant jack and jill who were assigned the engagement team concerning the disclosing points mentioned in the caro jack was of the opinion that the proceeding initiated under benami property need not be disclosed which we have discussed we have to and the expert team had informed the case would not withstand so we will have to disclose this we'll have already discussed however he insisted that cash loss should be disclosed along with the amount or yes we will have to disclose cash loss we have discussed this jill was of the opinion that caro is not applicable we have discussed that caro is applicable okay they both approached the firms mr y and s to resolve the matter mr y supported jack's view and supported jill's viewpoint now both the partners approached their senior partner to get clarification 
as, as a senior partner kindly clarify so we have covered everything what we need to add here just is that about the resignation nothing is required to be report to be reported under resignation because they have not resigned so under clause 18 the the auditor shall state put a statement for the resignation whether we have considered the objections and consideration of going auditor in the present case there is no resignation hence no such requirement is required so this was about caro 2020 so they will have covered four things here a very beautifully framed question so expect caro 2020 to be in an examination if not caro 2020 they may ask you question based on your probably your in days and everything so something based on you know in days or caro 2020 is applicable moving ahead with question 17 CAK is appointed a statutory auditor of Sikh India Private Limited under the Companies Act 13 for the first time. The company is preparing its accounts considering the applicable requirements of Division 1 of the Schedule 3 of the Companies Act. On scrutinizing the company's financial statement for the audit, it was noticed that the notes to account shows the aging trade payables as per the amended requirements of the Schedule 3 of the Companies Act. The aging form schedule forming part of the notes is as under outstanding the following periods from the due date. So they are showing you know what is the amount outstanding from everyone besides the above current ratio, debt equity ratio, trade payable turnover ratio, and the net profit ratio in the notes to accounts have slipped drastically as compared to the last year. And from the standard norm, most of the low likely financial ratios are in red. There is a no other relevant information concerning above in the notes to accounts. Further on review, the bank statement of the cash credit against hypothecation of the paid stock, it was noticed that there is no debit transaction in the month of 22. On inquiry, he came to know that the company stock was conducted in tw Jan 22 and the stock auditors have commented wide their report on 25th of Feb that the company had negative drawing power due to high creditors. Accordingly, the bankers have refused further debits in cash credit account. Further upon inquiry with the management, it was identified that management did not have any major future contracts to boost their revenue and financial position. There is no information in this respect in the financial statement and notes to accounts. Discuss how CAK should deal with the above reporting in this audit under the Companies Act. So here somewhere there is a doubt, there is a material uncertainty about the going concern and the financial statement does not disclose the same and hence in this case we will have to modify our opinion. So there is a situation where the material uncertainty exists which casts a significant doubt considering that the fact that although material uncertainty exists, the company has not made a disclosure of material uncertainty, we will have to modify our opinion as per 705. So this was talking about our SA705 plus SFY70 going concern. Moving ahead with the next question. CA Bharat has been appointed as the statutory auditor of Rishabh Limited for the year 21-22. The company while preparing financial statement for the year under audit prepared one additional profit and loss account disclose specific items of expenditure included the same as an appendix to the financial statement. CA Bharat had not been able to understand this as additional profit and loss is not covered in the AFRF. Guide him whether he should deal with this issue. So mark this important you will have to refer this question from here. So they are saying okay, if there is supplementary information which is not required by AFRF, auditor is not required to give an opinion on the same. But we will have to say, tell them that okay, there is supplementary information given. So let us read this answer. If supplementary information is not required by the AFRF, is presented in the audited financial statement, the auditor shall evaluate whether in auditor's profit judgment other uh, supplementary information is nevertheless an integral part of the financial statement due to its nature and how it is presented. When it is integral part, supplementary information shall also be covered in the opinion. So if it is an integral part, we will give an opinion on the same. But if it is not an integral part, no opinion is required. If the supplementary information is not required by the AFRF, is not considered integral part of the audited financial statement. The auditor shall evaluate whether sufficient information is presented in a way sufficiently and clearly differentiates it from the audited financial statement. 
if it again it is not the case auditor will ask the management how unaudited supplementary information is presented so if it is integral part we will have to give an opinion if it is not an integral part we will see whether it can be clearly differentiated if it is not we will ask the management how we are going to clearly differentiate it if the management refuses to do so the auditor shall identify unaudited supplementary information and explanation in the auditor's report that such supplementary information is not audited so we will mention that we have not audited that supplementary information now when additional profit and loss that discloses specific item and expenditure discloses a separate schedule included as appendix to the financial statement the auditor may consider this which can be clearly differentiated and now which can be clearly differentiated we will not give our opinion thus additional profit and loss is not considered as integral part of the financial statement and auditor shall evaluate with sufficient supplementary information is presented in sufficient and clearly differentiates from the audited financial statement so if it is an integral part we'll give opinion it is not integral part if we can differentiate we just need to make sure if it differentiate it is not included with the audited financial statement so this was about supplementary information important question which we have also covered in our lectures but make sure you read this from here next is audit of consolidated financial statement a very frequently asked question which we have done n number of times ca vishud is auditor of the brilliant limited a parent company which presents consolidated financial statement the management of brilliant limited had provided the list of components included in the cfs as an auditor of cfs ca vishud is has to verify that all the components have been identified included in the financial statement and review the information provided by the management state procedures followed by c a vishud in respect so what shall we do what can we do is we can review our previous years report we can review our previous years working papers which were the component we can review the parents procedure for identification of component we can inquire from the management whether there are any new component or any component which goes out we can review the investment of the parent as well as component to determine what are the shareholding pattern we can review the joint venture and other joint arrangements we can also review other arrangement we can see the statutory records maintained by the entity and we can also see the changes in the shareholding so frequently asked question which we have already covered in our notes question number 19 audit of banks what limited is enjoying cash credit facility from nariman point please make sure you pay attention to this particular answer because the way of writing answer is different mumbai branch of knb had 250 crores for the practical consideration various sub limits have been fixed for the borrower company operation at solapur pune and nashik so mumbai branch have fixed 250 crores as cash credit but sub limits have been you know identified area wise the manager of solapur branch noticed that no credit transaction in the sub limit account has been operated in solapur for more than 90 days so for solapur branch the sub limit see every branch has sub limits so for solapur we have not made any payment discuss the approach cm muni the statutory auditor of nariman point branch of knb is the matter of the asset classification of the above also discuss consideration in classifying the said accounts at the solapur so what should we do at the main mumbai branch at the solapur so here what they are saying is we will consider the main limit that we have given in mumbai we need not consider the sub limit separately because see at the end the borrower is the same he cannot be np at solapur and he will be you know a normal asset a regular asset at mumbai branch so we will consider the main limit whether he is been paying that sub limits need not be considered here so sometime a customer is sanction cash credit at one branch but is authorized to utilize limit at several branches for which sub limit is fixed in a, such a case the determination of status of npa or otherwise should be determined at the limiting branch with the reference to the overall sanction limit so we will not consider every sub limit only the main branch that is given the auditor of the limit sanctioning branch should examine whether it receives the particulars of all the transaction and the sub limits whether the status of the account has been determined next the hence keeping in then view the above cm muni should consider asset classification considering the total position of the operation regarding sub limit the classification adopted by sub limit branching should be followed 
and Solapur branch has to follow the classification made by the limit sanctioning branch that is what Mumbai does they need not do it separately so this was a new interesting question that they have added up which was not initially there in their RTP collection moving ahead with a discussion of audit under fiscal laws CA Gunjan is conducting tax audit of Kamban the client is engaged in the business of manufacturing and export carpets the financial statement of the company shows an amount of 4 crores credited in the statement of profit and loss account or the duty drawback. How would she perform the audit procedures to comply with specific requirements under Form 3CD? So how do we need to show duty drawback there? It was noticed that the amount of 5 lakhs of the duty drawback pertaining to the fuel report has not been credited to the PNL. The above, the above noted amount was admitted by the custom authorities in March 22. However, it was electronic transfer in the next year. Does not matter since we do our accounts on accrual basis, we will have to show it in this year. So, how do we show the duty drawback? The details of the following, if admitted as due by the concern but not credited to the PNL, we will have to show the performer credits. Drawback, refund of the amount of duty customs, refund of excise, service tax, sales or VAT. Second, a drawback of 5 lakhs is notice. We will have to show this on accrual basis. We will have to show this even if they have sent this in the next year because it was accrued in the month of March. So this was clause 16 that is duty drawback. Next, question 21. Siddha Limited, a company wholly owned central government was disinvested during the year resulting 40% of the shares held by the company. But now it was wholly owned, but now 40% are by public, so 60% still remains with government. So technically this is still a government company, because when we, we government owns more than 51%, it is a government company. The shares were also listed on the BSC. Since the shares were listed, all the listing requirements were applicable. Mahavir, FM of the company is of the opinion now that the company is subject to the stringent control by BSC. Therefore, the auditing requirement to of a company in a private sector of the Companies Act would be applicable to the company and CAG will not have any role to play. So, is this correct? No, my friends. Does not matter whether you are listed or in the process of listing. Since you are a government company, more than 51% is held by government, CAG will appoint the auditors here. So, here, the auditors of this companies of the chartered accountant will be appointed by CAG who gives the auditors direction in the manner. In this situation, company is a wholly owned government company during the previous year resulting 40% in the shares held by the public. The shares were also listed on BSE. The listing of share on stock is irrelevant for this purpose and the, your Mahavi's opinion is incorrect. Obviously, CAG will have a role in this. Next question number 22. CA Sanjana is citing as a credit manager of a branch of DFC Bank. A company has approached the branch to request the sanction of credit facilities of 10 crores for meeting usual business requirement. It is a prospective new client. She checks past history of the company, background of the promoters and directors, shareholding pattern and the nature of the business. Assessment of the financial results of the past and future projection is also undertaken. She also carries out SWOT analysis of the company. Besides, the assessments of the net worth of the director is also undertaken. Sybil score and position of the name of the promoter's RBI defaulters list is also verified. She, what, she also takes discrete inquiries from new clients of the branch engaged in similar line activity. Based on the above, identify the activity. What here she has done is nothing but due diligence which is very very evident. So here you will have to write due diligence and you will have to explain what exactly is a due diligence. This is your first leg of the answer. Next, could your answer be different if this activity was to be performed if the person was not a chartered accountant? Can a non-CA perform? Yes, for due diligence, no requirement to be a qualified chartered accountant or COP. So even a non-CA can do this. Name any other three areas where this activity can be used. So in this case, they have given the examples where we can do. We can do for corporate restructuring, venture capital, public finances, a lot of such areas. They have asked three. So here they have answered three points. So this was nothing but due diligence. Next, peer review and quality review. Obviously, this is going to be important because there are amendments in this particular part. Secretarial staff to the quality review board in the, is in the process of preparing a panel for submission to the board to enable it initial reviews 
of the quality of the audit services provided by the members of ICI. The draft panel has been prepared by Mr. P, a junior in the QRV secretariat and it has moved up in hierarchy for a vetting by a senior staff, Mr. R, before being put up in the upcoming meeting of quality review for its consideration. Draft panel contains the details of the following entities audited by the audit firm. XYZ, unlisted company, which sector, education, paid up capital, annual turnover, outstanding deposits and name of the firm. Then PQR listed in BSC, NSC and New York Stock Exchange, manufacturing, the paid up and everything. X insurance which is unlisted and everything I have given. Ours limited, unlisted, again manufacturing. Figures of the immediately preceding years and are in crores. He is the inclusion name of the audit firms of corresponding entities in the draft panel to put up before the QRB report appropriate guide Mr. R. So here they are asking whether QRB can do this. So see there are certain entities on which NAFRA has an authority and certain on QRB. So NAFRA will take care of the following companies that is companies which are listed on any stock exchange in or outside India. So here when we talk about listed so PQR cannot be covered by QRB because who is going to take care of the same NAFRA. Second unlisted public companies of paid up share capital not less than 500 crores and having a turnover see they are saying paid up share capital of not less than 500 crores and turnover of not less than 1000 crores or the borrowings of net less than 500 crores. So here if we talk about understood company now the paid up share capital is 450 but turnover is how much 1200. So somewhere XYZ limited will also be covered by NAFRA. Next insurance companies here this is a insurance company so X will also not be covered by QRB it will be covered by NAFRA. Next any body corporate or person or class of class of bodies where the reference has been made by the central government. Fine. So here in this particular case only what they can do is QRB can deal with as limited but they cannot cover this too because see if you consider the understood the limits are not met here. So the first three companies will be covered by NAFRA, the ours can be covered by QRB. So considering the above XYZ, PQR and insurance, NAFRA has a power to see the, oversee the quality. However, QRB can undertake review of quality of services of ours limited. So this was our peer review. Next professional ethics. Mr. X is a practicing chartered accountant based out of Chennai. During the week ends, he involved himself in the equity research and used to advise his friends, relatives and other people to know who are not his clients. So can he do so? Yes, we are allowed. We just cannot, you know, publish a report for equity. So this was your first part. Apart from this, he was involved in paper setter for accountancy in his school in his free time. Can he do so? Yes. Also, he owned a agriculture land and doing agriculture in his free time. So as for the general resolution in clause 11, we can do, we can be a paper setter and we can also do agriculture activities, no problem. So this is part number two. So part one, there was no problem. Part two also, there is no problem. Third, during the year, heavy losses were incurred in agriculture due to natural calamities and misfortune. And he lost almost all of his wealth and we can become undischarged insolvent. After a few court proceedings, hearings, finally in the year, 2013 23 he was declared discharged insolvent and obtained a certificate from the court stating that his insolvency was caused by misfortune without any misconduct on his part you are required to comment so this is the third part that where he is declared insolvent see if he is declared insolvent and he, if he can prove that it is not because of his misconduct it was because misfortune then he will not be guilty so in all the three cases he is not guilty so let us consider one my case he can enter into equity no problem he cannot publish a report here he has not published so here there is no misconduct secondly can he involve in accountancy and agriculture yes as per clause 11 as per the general resolution he can do this so again there is no misconduct in the next point where he was declared insolvent if he has proved that it was not because of his misconduct it was misfortune then again there is no misconduct here as well so he is not debarred from this so in both all the three cases there is no misconduct.
moving ahead with the last question of the descriptive part that is right short note on categorizations of the NBFCs so the year they have given all the categorizations of NBFC mm -hmm. do read this particular answer they have also asked what is the role of the risk management committee so mark this important risk management they are focusing highly these days and uh, lastly what they are asking is what are the qualities of the operational auditor so these are the basic straight away given questions no case study nothing interpretation required all you are supposed to do is write this particular answers so this was our discussion of the descriptive paper so this was our discussion of the rtp of may 23 i hope this video was helpful for you also i would insist solve a few rtps of the previous attempts if you do not have time we already have uploaded the videos in the previous attempts you can go in the playlist and just put it on 2x and just rear it out so you know you'll be able to interpret more and more questions because the whole game of ca final audit is about interpreting because if you can interpret it well you will be in a position to write if you cannot interpret even though you know the answers you will not be in a position to write so thank you very much if you have any further doubts you have the doubt solving mechanism with you you have the helpline numbers please reach out to us we will be happy to help you all the best once again my friends just one leg away from being a coach qualified chartered accountant and being a member of the institute hope to see you soon with a when you know when you are a member of the institute as a colleague thank you very much all the best take care bye bye